Good morning. My name is Daphne, and I will be your operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CA Process Automation Global User Community Webcast. At this time, all lines are placed in a listen-only mode. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during that time, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to E.L. Kittum. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, everybody. Um, I would like to start quickly with uh, some introduction. My name is E.L. Kittum. Um, I'm a consultant uh, in the service management area. Uh, in uh, Switzerland, I would like to start actually with um, presenting to you the uh, community board members. I hope you all see my slides. Let me go to the first slide. We have um, uh, elected a number of people to go through the um, um, community board. Uh, first is Mr. Henry. Uh, L. He is our uh, community board, board president. Um, he's also a consultant, managing director for Terry Limited, which is an IT consultancy specializing in automation, specifically around the workload and process automation. We have uh, Mr. Miguel Silva. He's also uh, part uh, of the, the board, a board member, which is a uh, um, he is a consultant consultant at uh, Portugal Telecom. Dorothy Livecci, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, she's also a board member, consultant with Rolta, um, which is a global consulting company located in Atlanta. Currently uh, working for Rolta, supports various service management products with all of their functions. We have Louis, or Louis Vandenberg, he's also a board member. Uh, he is actually an automation strategist at Nike in Beaverton, Oregon, United States. And we have myself, Al Kedem, also board member uh, of the PAM Community Board. Our uh, our missions, actually, as board uh, members, are the following presented to you, as you can see from here. It's actually to be kind of a bridge between you, uh, the community, ourselves, which are we are also part of this community and company who owns, uh, develops, uh, promotes uh, the PAM process automation manager, and specifically, uh, we'd like to go through those uh, four points. First and foremost is to promote the community by sharing experience and knowledge. We have, I know we have uh, a number of um, communities worldwide, and um, um, we would like to, to try to consolidate things, put things in the in the in, in the proper place in one place, in order to be able to share benefits from experiences from different people around the world. Secondly, uh, very important also to try to grow membership. Uh, in our community, in the CA community. This is clear. Uh, uh, as much as, as many people as we will have, then the, the chances that we will have more experience, more knowledge is more, uh, is higher. The third part is try to stimulate um, conversation, support community interests uh, among ourselves, and uh, not less important, is uh, try to represent the community in front of uh, CA. And at this point, I would like to, to say and to show with you that uh, if you have any any type of an issue, I know that there is the support organization, the development organization, any uh, different type of types of organization. This is another channel channel for you uh, to approach to bring up your, your problems or your challenges and to share it with us, and we will promote it further with the CA. At, uh, at this point, 
Uh, there will be a, a point uh, uh, in time for question and answers afterwards at the end or during the, the session. If there's any question, just raise your hands and let us know uh, if we can help with anything. At this point, I would like to hand over to Henry. Henry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, question is to you. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to just have a day on our webcast um, what is involved in the PAM and Service Desk integration. Um, I've kept it fairly simple, um, partly just uh, to, you know, uh, don't want to get too complicated and too bogged down in heavy technical detail. We can always have a session if we needed some more technical uh, uh, detail at some point uh, in the future. But the other reason is that the actual integration is actually fairly simple between the two products. So, firstly, what I'm going to cover is I'm just going to have a, 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 an overview of how the integration between PAM and Service Desk works. Then I'm going to look at um, what is required from a PAM perspective to configure to be able to integrate with Service Desk. And then from the Service Desk side as well, what is required from a configuration perspective to be able to communicate to PAM. Then I'm going to speak briefly about uh, content packs and a couple of common errors that we have or have come across that seem to catch most people out. Uh, and uh, as uh, E.L. said, at any point, if you have a question, please put it in the questions and, uh, section and I'll try and address them if relevant, otherwise we'll keep them to the end and we can have a general question and answer at the end. Uh, so from an over, overview perspective, you'll see that my first two points, that the integration is bi-directional, but the integration can also be one way. It kind of uh, can potentially be confusing. And that is because essentially the integration from each individual product is one way but if you've configured on both sides, you have bi-directional integration. And what I mean by that is you can go and configure PAM to be able to communicate and integrate into Service Desk, and then PAM can take actions against objects in uh, Service Desk, whether it's creating a new ticket, updating a ticket, creating a new change request, closing a change request, updating a change request, whatever it might be. So in that way, we've then, once we've done that, we have a one-way integration from PAM to Service Desk. Then we can go to Service Desk and go and integrate to PAM. So we can have, um, we, there's some configuration that we do, and then from Service Desk, we can go and start processes in PAM. And these are typically done through start request forms. So again, there's a one-way connection from Service Desk to PAM. But PAM can talk if you've configured the integration on the PAM side, it can talk back to Service Desk. Hence, you end up with a bi-directional integration, although it's two single-way integrations, effectively, I guess. So that's at a, 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 a very high level. So essentially, the integrations were, uh, in both cases, uses the other product's web services capabilities. So Service Desk talks to the PAM web service uh, interface, and PAM talks to the Service Desk web services um, objects that are exposed. So uh, they, you can do pretty much anything that is available within the um, web services. So if we look from a PAM configuration, once you've installed the integration module for Service Desk, You'll see that um, in your configuration uh, browser on, on PAM, if you go to the modules, you'll see that there's a Service Desk module. And in there, you can configure things like the uh, Service Desk web service URL, the user that it must use, and the password. And those, that's the bare minimum that you require to have your configuration working. Um, once you've done that, also, when you install the uh, configuration or integration module, 
it creates a whole load of service desk related operators that will allow you to go and take actions against service desk objects. Now in those operators, if you have not defined the default connect, uh, um, connection URL use ID password, then you can specify it at each beta level. So when you drag the operator into your process, you can actually specify user and password at that point as well and uh, URL. Um, there's not necessarily a particular reason why you'd want to do it at an operator level as opposed to a, a generic high level, um, except if you possibly have more than one PAM and you at different points you might be looking at different PAM processes or uh, different service desks um, that on certain operators you might be working on a different service desk, although that's fairly unlikely. So that's really all that there is from a PAM perspective, to go and configure it, to be able to talk to the uh, first step. So if we just go briefly through the steps, you install the module, and that's normally done during installation of your actual PAM. There's a, a last you whether you want to install the service disk module or not. But there's a separate installer as well, um, if needed. The installer creates the module where you go and configure it, and it installs a whole bunch of operators that you can use in many of your processes. Then, on the service desk side, there's no additional installation directing from Service Desk, but in the Operations Manager, there is a workflow section where you go and configure PAM. And you need to give it the web service URL, the user, the password, and there's a couple of other um, options that you can specify um, in the operation, in the Options Manager of Service Desk. And once you've done that, then Service Desk has the ability to talk to PAM. Now, how you would utilize PAM from Service Desk is in two main areas. One is in uh, event action. So within the Service Desk, you can generate events. Uh, even when you're transitioning a ticket from one status to another, you can get it to fire an event. And on those events, you can take actions. And one of those actions that you can then utilize is a PAM process. So at any point then, whether it's a transitioning or even creating a new ticket, you can go and specify it to go and execute a particular PAM process at that point. The other one is in your actual change management workflow. So within your change management module, when you create your change um, uh, categories and, and everything. The workflow for that, you can use the basic workflow within Service Desk, which essentially just oh, changes uh, between different statuses, or you can go and actually use PAM for your workflow. So that where there's particular change based on categories, you can call different uh, PAM processes based on that category, and it can then run the workflow. With, and that's in that case, then PAM can take care of everything from uh, approvals um, to actually de actual deployment if you really wanted to. So you can do pretty much anything that you wanted to do at that point. So that is the configuration within Service Desk that you would need to set up. So it's really quite simple, and you just don't call the... Um, PAM processes. And most of the time when you call those PAM processes from Service Desk, it is done by a start request form. Now, when you do call a PAM process, there is a certain amount of information that's passed to the PAM process. But sometimes you require more information from the object. And once you've actually, in your PAM process, once it's started and you've got the basic in information, Amongst others, it gives you um, the actual record ID, uh, the person ID for that um, ticket or change um, that you're working with. Um, you can use that and use the operators that come with the 
TAM module, uh, service desk module, to actually go interrogate service desk and extract the information that you want. Okay? Alternatively, you can also go and use SQL operators to go and do SQL queries against service desk and go and extract all the information you want in that way. Um, now, there is actually a document that has been prepared uh, from by, uh, one of the CA service um, consultants that explains how to go and do all of that sort of uh, inter-configuration, but it takes service desk, PAM, and service catalog into account. Um, and they use the SQL query method. And the reason for that is that the, um, with the, uh, some of the PAM operators, you can go and get certain bits of information, and at times you'll need to do more than one call to be able to get all of the information that you want. Whereas they've constructed SQL queries that gives them all of the information they require in one go. So it's just kind of for efficient needs. Um, and that, that becomes really important when you're working in a, a large environment, um, high volumes. But in smaller environments, it's probably not as noticeable or the effect is not as noticeable. Okay, so that's a configuration. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is content packs. Now, CIF developed a number of content packs um, there's content packs for service desk. They've also got content packs for other CA products like um, Autosys, etc. And essentially, you can go and download those content packs and load it. And what it is, is it gives you a bit of a quick start, um, some common processes that people have used. There's even a uh, ITIL based content pack. And what that's got is processes for some fairly standard change requests or um, you know, uh, ticket processes that you will utilize uh, or potentially utilize with Service Desk. So um, there's, I can't, remember, I can't remember how many processes come with the content pack, but there's a number of them, and then you can go and look through them and then you can, as they've all been created generically because of, um, you know, because it's going out to a, a wide community, everybody does things differently. So it's been created generic to give you a framework. And then you can go and modify those content packs to improve and make them more specific uh, to what your requirements are. So the content packs are a really great way to get going quickly, um, especially if you're not... Uh, you know, if you're starting off uh, down the route and you're not necessarily that familiar with uh, PAM yet or you're still learning PAM, this is a really good way of you now to get ahead of the uh, game quickly and get going. So that's the content packs. So just a couple of um, gotchas. From a PAM um from the service desk uh, configuration perspective, the PAM user that you supply must have access to the web services. Now, within uh, EM, you specify whether a particular user has got the ability to use web service object, uh, methods or not. And the user that you use within the service desk configuration must have that, otherwise you have a problem. From the PAM perspective, if you're using, um, the service desk user it must have sufficient permissions for the actions that you're wanting to take. So if you're wanting to create a, a, a ticket in a particular category or a change request in a particular category or want to update when you've got to have permissions to those objects, otherwise, obviously, you're going to run into problems. The other one that often catches people out is if you are calling PAM processes from a macro in service desk, then the start request form in PAM must have a keyword of macro. So just the word macro must be specified as a keyword. To do that by, when you open up the um, start request form within PAM, and you go to the properties tab on the left-hand side, you'll see you can go and edit the properties in the keyword tab where you can go and add keywords. 
and all you need to do is add a macro one. Because what happens is that service data goes to PAM and looks in the particular uh, it goes and looks for all start request forms that have got a keyword of macro because then it lists them and those are then ones that you can use within your macros uh, within Service Desk. So I think that's pretty much covers it from a, a fairly high level uh, sort of basic uh, perspective. So I'd like to just open up a call to questions. Uh, so Prater, could we give people that and meet the pe uh, people so they can ask questions? At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. Again, that is star, then the number one to ask a question. Again, in order to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. Your first question comes from the line of Dean Barry with Disney. Hello, Barry. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is there a way you can pass that you know of that you can pass something besides the purse ID or in addition to the purse ID when creating a uh, process start from service test? Um, well, there is more than that pass, but a lot of it does depend on from where it's being called, and, and it gives the sort of basic. Um, I think there is actually a way that you can manipulate, uh, partially manipulate what can and what can't. But um, it doesn't kind of give you everything, and it, it just seems to never really do that. I'm not quite sure if it's got to do with the way that server test does outbound calls or, or, or not. Okay, thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Ken Kid Vansel with XL Global Services. Uh, hi, just want to you know check. Uh, if, if you know uh, we can have two-way writing, uh, like say taking an action from uh, within CS Service Desk, updating uh, the workflow, that is the uh, PAM flow. Are you saying if you you want to go and modify the PAM flow from Service Desk? Yeah. So say uh, uh, flow started. Uh, now say. Uh, a, a, a task is pending from the PAM side, say approval task is pending from the PAM side. Now uh, from within CA service desk, if we uh, say uh, run here or say update a particular field, based on that can that approval be processed? Um, yeah, it's, it's, you can do that. And the way we will do that is um, in You'll need to think about, and it depends on how your approval um, mechanism works as well. But, for instance, if you use whatever method you use, um, if you've got the ability to uh, control what comes back from the approval system then, and, and you use web services, then the best thing to use is the event feature in um, PAM. So what you do is you can create the... Um, uh, you go and fire off the uh, request to your approval system and then in, in your plan process you wait for an event and then when the approval happens in the approval system it will send back a, a web services call with a send event to go and uh, with the event details that you're waiting for and then what you can do then is obviously from um, the service desk, you can create a generic, uh, another generic uh, process where you can specify on the, you know, that's it's a generic one that just does a send event uh, from within the process, and then you pass it information, and it'll go and do the uh, send event, which will then get that uh, process to continue and say that it has been approved. So it's, it's not straightforward, but using something like events, you can do that. And uh, are there any examples available with CA? I don't believe so. Um, I know that the there is a uh, tutorial uh, pack um, available for PAM, and that covers using events, but that won't specifically cover it using it from Service Desk as such. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. Again, star, then the number one. 
Your next question comes from the line of Scott Zalewski with Jackson National. Hi. Uh, you had mentioned earlier uh, some documentation about integration between AM and Service Desk, Service Catalog, and that, that detailed some efficient queries that were used. Uh, where do we find that information? Um, I need to just check with um, the person who supplied it. Uh, he, uh, it's a, uh, he's one of the CA Services uh, consultants in the UK, a guy called Paul Stiles, and I need to just make sure that I can um, propagate that. If I can, then I will put it up on the community board. Okay. And uh, you also had in the previous question mentioned a tutorial package. Is that yep. um, those like four web videos that come out of the box with PAM 4.0, or is that something else that has more specific tutorials? Um, actually, this is actually tutorials from version 3. Um, okay. And it, I've got the zip files. I can load them up onto the, uh, um, the uh, community board if, if we're able to load, upload files. Or I can upload it, then uh, people can use it. Because it's just a couple of really simple uh, processes to help you identify or understand a couple of the different Is there a similar tutorial package for 4.0? Because we're currently on 4.0. No, but if you in import those 3.0 ones, it'll still work. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. We'll pause for just a moment. At this time, there are no additional questions. Okay, Randy did ask a question in the um, question section uh, about uh, kind of exactly what was just asked now about uh, providing links to content packs and the tutorial on the community site. So I will get all that information together and, and, and put it up on the community site. Again, if you would like to ask an audio question, please press star, then the number one telephone keypad. There are no questions at this time. We now have a question from Andrea Holmes with Travelport. Hi. Um, actually, my question was about um, the ITPM4. We were under the impression that ITPM4 will not work with Service Test Manager. Um, I'm more aware of that myself. Um, I will have. I'll make a note of that and have a look into it. Um, but yeah, I'm not aware that it's, that there's any issues with it. Okay. Thank you. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one. At this time, there are no questions. Okay, um, I would like everybody to just, uh, if there's no more questions, please just go ahead and take a, a, a second to... Um, fill in the poll question for us, um, and if, at any point, if you think of questions that, uh, you know, once we're done, once, uh, uh, once the webcast is uh, complete, then by all means, um, post the questions on the community board, and we will answer them. And if you would like to ask a question, press star, then the number one. Um, now, there was a question on the uh, board where uh, someone said, is it possible to design the home page of PA and possibly translate it? So I'm assuming that someone will customize the landing page. Uh, I don't know that that can actually be done right now. Uh, I know there's something that isn't uh, being considered. 
Um, as for translation, there are some translations available. I'm not sure exactly which or. I've also just had a comment from Tom saying that he has used Service Desk with PAM4, so it does seem like it is working. And we have an audio question from Roger Moore, CA Technologies. Hi, Henry. This is Roger Moore. I'm one of the product managers for CA Service Desk Manager. I'm based at Seattle, Washington. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to the cool user community today. I wanted to follow up on the comment. I wasn't sure. Who, it was just a few minutes ago. Someone said that they were under the impression that Process Automation Manager 4.0 does not work with Service Desk Manager. We have not yet conducted our full QA testing for Process Automation 4.0. We had some challenges with the, the service hacks that, uh, that they published, so it's still in our QA backlog. Uh, we hope to get it out, you know, obviously as soon as possible, and, and once we do conduct that QA testing, we will update the SDM certification metrics accordingly. That being said, we do not expect there to be any difficulties because process automation has done backwards compatibility checking from 4.0 to the previous version 3.x, I'll just say. So we don't expect there to be any difficulties with uh, how we address process automation manager and what we do with process automation manager today. Uh, so, it, again, it should work, and uh, you know, and people should be able to take advantage of that. We just haven't conducted the full QA testing yet. So I hope that information is, is helpful, Henry. Yes, thank you very much. And, you know, I, I must be honest, I didn't expect that there would be, because the integration is based on the web services, um, you know, the, the likelihood of there being any issues is very, very remote. Your next question comes from the line of Michael Mazzucrowitz with New York Community Bank Corp. Yes, I wanted to expand on one of the questions that somebody had stated before, and I'm sorry, I don't know the person's name or company, but we're actually in a uh, process of implementing Service Desk 12.6 right now. We're using IDPAM 3, and we do have a very robust PAM um, basically uh, a whole list of things as far as status transitions. And we were originally told that Service Desk cannot go back to PAM to actually tell PAM to move to the next steps. So I wanted to elaborate a little bit, not too much, on what you were stating before, where you're saying that events can be used in order to go back to IT PAM to tell it to move on to the next step? Yeah. Um, so. Are you, are you looking for a, slight, a little bit of an elaboration on how you would do that? Just a little bit, not too technical or too much, but enough for us to go back to our PAM development team who is actually writing this for us at this time so that we can explain to them this new information. Um, right, so at a fairly high level, what I would do is I would create a generic process in PAM just called uh, event process or something like that. and then. From um, Service Desk, you would then, at the point when you want to go and uh, get the, uh, a waiting PAM process to move on, you would then go and um, kick off this uh, event processor. And it can then go and query the um, ticket or the object that that's coming from. And as soon, one of the first things that you should always do in your PAM processor, so let's say, it's a, let's say we're working on a change flow. So when a change, you kick off a PAM process as part of the flow, one of the first things you should do from PAM is go back to that uh, change and go and insert the process ID number so that you know what it is. That's what I thought, okay. And then um, when you uh, at the point where you want to interact with it from this event process, so at that point, once it's, while it's waiting, it must wait, have that wait for event. And uh, one of the values must be its own um, process ID. Then from uh, service desk, when you want to go and interact with it, you will go and call that generic event processor. It will go back and query the, the object ID, and it can then uh, do the send event with using the PAM I process ID. Or you could even use that uh, PAM process 
wait on the service desk ticket number or change number. And again, when you uh, send it, you've got that number available to you, so that becomes part of your send it, your event message, which it'll wait for and it'll pick it up and it'll get to it. And, and that and yeah, that's part of what we were thinking is we could we could have Pam waiting to hear back from SDM. Um, the problem is is that the curb leads design workflow basically has Pam going back to service desk and check over and over and over, which is terrible because it literally needs to log in and out every single time we want to do this. So this is one of the things that we were most interested in is trying to find a way of having service desk say, okay, I'm done. Now you can go ahead and take over IT, Pam. Yeah, because I, I have done something similar in, because I've, uh, at one uh, organization, I helped them develop a integration to a custom bespoke um, desk that they had um, for doing, you know, hardware maintenance. And from services, they needed to talk in both directions to that. And we used that, we used a lot of events to wait for things um, so that in that way we could pass information around without actually um, doing anything differently or, or, you know, keeping logging in, in, out, in, out, as you say. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. At this time, there are no additional questions. Again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then the number one. Is a, a question on the um, live meeting, I uh, say. Uh, the, you know, with to, talking about login, logout of SDM for each call, uh, is it possible to reuse the login information? So, a session. There is, um, you can use session parameter, uh, or you can generate a session ID that you can then reuse. Um, so it is possible to use service desk session IDs. There are no additional audio questions at this time. Well, if there is no more questions, then and uh, I don't know if um, Mary has anything to add or any one of the other board members, but um, I'm then. Thank you very much, Henry. We appreciate it, and everybody, stay tuned uh, on the message boards for our next webcast. Thank you. This concludes today's conference. You may now disconnect. Speakers, please hold the lines.